Okay, this video with that dramatic start, uh, this is about these last two knives uh, that I've had from the pass around group, uh, Therapeutic Edges pass around group, uh, these budget damn designs. Uh, I've had this group of knives, four knives, for way longer than I should have. I apologize to anyone who's downstream waiting for these. Uh, they're great. I really, really like them. And I was planning on making a separate video for each one. I made a video on the Fenrir, which is probably my favorite of the group. Uh, and I also made one of the uh, other one. This, oh uh, gosh, I can't remember the name of this one right off the top of my head, but I will before this is all over. I made videos on these because they're really unique, cool blade shapes. I love this, uh, this sort of very dramatic worn cliff. And I love this equally dramatic clip point. So I made separate videos about these. Nice uh, thumb stun on bearings action here and a really nice flipper action here. Um, and then I, I sat on making videos of these because I've seen more videos on these and uh, didn't know what I had to offer. But now I really do have to send these out and get them to the next person. And I just wanted to document that I had them in my possession for a while and how great they are. This is the Cerberus. Uh, it is G10, beautiful, uh, um, what do you call it? Neutral or Jade G10, natural Jade G10, um, which I love. And you can see through it a little bit, it's sort of translucent. You can see the um, the holes in the steel liners underneath it. You can see some of the, the inner workings. I think that's the internal stop pin there. And uh, like all the other damn designs that we've looked at here, it's got that concentric hexagon, hexagonal um, pivot on the show side with their cool logo here. Those are two crossed knives. And then you've got ram's horns, kind of in keeping with the damned theme. D2, blade steel, flat ground, beautiful clip point blade. I mean, that is just a, a very, very nice looking clip point blade and functional and useful. Um, from here to about here, you have a, a good amount of uh, useful straight. And then from here to the tip, you've got nice belly, gorgeous look, but also you've got this nice swedge up here, which uh, actually does not continue all the way to the tip. So it doesn't necessarily help in penetration, but it lightens up and thins out this back. So once, once you've made the initial piercing with this, it's easier to go in with the swedge. Um, very nice jimping on these, very nice jimping indeed. Um, feels good on the hand, doesn't, uh, isn't, a, isn't overly abrasive, but your thumb definitely finds purchase encryption right there. Beautifully shaped handle. I'm gonna, I swear I'm gonna stop using the term beautifully. Very nicely shaped handle, ergonomic. I like this curve down. Um, you know, all different kinds of knives come in different kinds of shapes. You have uh, neutral handles, you have overly committed handles. Uh, this kind of uh, palm treatment here, I like, you know, nestles right there in the palm. And then it gives the blade a slightly ang uh, downward angling, uh, which accelerates cutting. So just a very sweet design. I was gonna say a nice design, but this is uh, from a company called Damned Designs. So to call it nice, I think is, uh, is not right. Wicked, it's a wicked design. Uh, you've got a nice uh, deep carry pocket clip and uh, recessed screws. Uh, Mr. D'Souza, the gentleman who designed this man, he, he knew what he was doing. I think he is a knife fan himself and he knew to recess those screws. Can't be that hard, right? I mean, I know it's probably an extra step to pocket out the G10, that costs money. Um, maybe it's an extra step to find screws that are flat on top, but conical below the, uh, above the threads. I don't know, but why doesn't everyone do this? I mean, there are some really, really amazing knives from highly respected makers and companies that aren't doing this yet, and I just don't understand. Um, but very nice clip, like the clip. And I've been seeing this a bit recently where the, the deep carry is just so deep, you can't even see the damn knife when it's in your pocket. So nicely done. This I also like that they have um, created this, uh, what do you call it? A little filler tab for the offside. That's another thing. I know it's an extra step and it's extra money, but I, I would love to see that on everything because um, on everything that has a little pocket um, milled out to accommodate a clip on 
the other side on the side that it doesn't ship in and eh, I, I just would like to see that filler tab happen more and more and more and this is a budget knife this is a $50 knife or so so to see a nice filler tab on a $50 knife is very encouraging and I think others should do that so that's the Cerberus and here is the Invictus uh, to me of all the damned designs probably my least um, I mean, I like them all. This one sets my heart beating uh, not as fast as the others. You know me, uh, drop points are, are always kind of the last blade invited to the party when it comes to me, even though this is probably of all of them, seems to me to be the most useful, the most EDC, uh, most effective all-arounder. I don't know, I don't know, maybe not. Um, but you have all the same things here. You have a nice G10 handle with these really wide chamfers. All of these knives have a really wide uh, chamfers on the handles. And that gives it, first of all, sort of a more hexagonal shape in cross section. But it gives, and I'm gonna borrow a term that someone used on Thursday Night Knives. It gives an added dimensionality to the knife. So it feels great in hand. It, it's not just about the feel. You know, you look at this uh, paramilitary two and the, um, the G10 handle is just kind of square. It, there's, a, there's a micro champ, chamfer there and that adds to the comfort. But here, these really broad cutouts here really make it melt into our, you know, we are organic creatures. Everything on us is curved. So this accommodates our curves just a little more comfortably and better. Got G10 backspacer, like all of these. Again, that deep carry pocket clip. This one goes even deeper, but with the recessed screws. Thank you very much. Nicely done. Um, not sure if this is titanium or steel. I suspect it's steel. I don't have a magnet around me. As a matter of fact, I need to get one and just kind of keep it poised for these moments. Um, nicely milled out lightning holes, lightening, not lightning, lightening holes on those uh, um, liners, even on the lock side, you see one right there. So they're going to great lengths to make this as light and pocket friendly as possible while being somewhat large. I mean, these are nicely sized blades, one, two, three and a half inches, depending on where you measure from, one, two, three and a half. They're all about three and a half. Um, this one has this acid stone wash. I'll be right out, baby. I'm doing a video. Uh, this one has a really nice acid stone wash that I love um, and a full flat grind, whereas uh, these others have high height flat grinds, um, like this one, the Fenrir. Um, but this one goes all the way up. So this is going to be very, th it feels very thin and very slicey behind the edge in it. And even though it's a flat grind, it's a pretty broad blade. So um, with the distance from the edge to the spine with that flat grind, it has a lot of chance to get very thin and slicey. I saw that uh, Stasa23 uh, did a video on this where he did a whole bunch of testing and it just did beautifully. This is also D2, I said it again, it did really well. It accelerated at all tasks thrown at it. How's that? Uh, D2, I've always loved D2. I remember when D2 first came out, it was a big deal. And now, of course, it's been uh, it's been relegated to the, the budget knife world. But I have always loved D2. I think it's awesome steel. Uh, it gets so sharp. And, um, well, I guess depending on what D2. But this is very good steel. Um, just because it's not M390 doesn't mean it's gonna just fall apart um, or dull out real quickly. First D2 I had was CPM D2, so it was powdered D2 on a Protec knife, and that really left a big impression on me. Uh, very, very nice steel. Uh, let me just run in a, uh, a couple, uh, just two. I only have two, uh, what do you call it, size comparison knives, but just so you get an idea of um, the kind of size we're dealing with with these knives here. Maybe I'll do this this time. Seems like I might have more room. Uh, okay, so 
this is what these look like compared to, oh, I don't know. That's just getting me. It doesn't do it for me. I'm gonna turn them sideways. And since this video is about the Cerberus and the Invictus, I will just, just keep these two up on the table and I'll, I'll put the knife comparisons between them. Between and betwixt. All right, so this is a three inch size knife. This is like a mini grip, except in this case, it's the Ritter Hogue RSK1 Mark I. Uh, such a great knife, such an awesome knife. Especially when they recess the screws on the next iteration. That's, that's total hearsay. I don't know if they're gonna do that or not. I just made that up. Uh, okay, and next, so you see it's quite, they're, they're quite a bit larger than that. And then we have the knife by which all knives are compared, at least in terms of size, ergonomics, and prevalence, the PM2. So uh, the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 is about the same size, I must say. I must say, let's see if we put the pivots, pivot to pivot. Eh, I mean, they're, you know, about, they're in the same neighborhood, in the same neighborhood. So I have no news on when these are gonna become uh, widely available again. I know that they, uh, like all knives, they go through runs and uh, um, I don't know how many came out in the last run or what or how any of that works, uh, but these have been snatched up greedily. And these, by the way, and some that are on the way, uh, on the way from Dam Designs, a uh, couple of really tantoid um, designs, these are uh, in the budget realm. So when Dam Designs first came out, they were making everything M390, titanium frame locks, and and then they decided, hey, let's do a little retooling here, and let's let's put out some of these awesome designs because you can tell uh, the mind that created these is quite fertile. I'm sure there are many designs in there, and so the idea was, uh, let's make some, let's get these designs out there and in people's hands in a more budget-friendly mode. These are all fifty-dollar knives. Um, let's get these in the hands of people, make them more widely available, get people hooked on my designs, and then I'll start coming back out with some of the more premium uh, material versions. And uh, I think that seems like a very sound strategy. You know, it came out of the gate with super high quality materials and designs, and then on the, uh, on a, on the next pass, uh, make them designs that everyone can afford and get, you know, it's kind of like the dealer does, give them a sweet taste, and then they'll come running back for more and you can come back with more premium stuff. So I sadly, with a tear in my eye, will be boxing these up and sending them out in the mail this very same day. So um, I just wanted to show off the Invictus and the Cerberus uh, before I do, because I made videos on these other two. Beautiful, beautiful knives. I love what you do, Mr. D'Souza. I'm sorry, I can't remember your first name, um, but I love your designs. He's out in Wyoming. I love your state. I love your knives. Uh, can't wait for more of these to come out. Uh, I really would like to get some of these myself. Um, these two would be top of my list. Here they are. All right, well, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy, and keep your eyes peeled for more damned designs in the offing uh, and coming real soon. Take care.